So good morning, everyone. I am Keegan Sawyer. I am a senior program officer here at the National Academies and director of the Standing Committee on Use of Emerging Science for Environmental Health Decisions. I am so happy to see all of you here. Thank you for coming. We are having a very exciting talk today about genome editing um, and the many different types of tools that could be used um, for toxicology, for environmental health. It's a topic that's not been broadly discussed yet in the environmental health and toxicology world, and so we're very excited to launch that discussion. First, um, we will have Melissa Perry from George Washington University. She's co-chair of the Standing Committee, give some welcoming comments, followed by Th Kimberly Thigpen-Tart from NIEHS, and then we will get started. So, Melissa? Thanks so much, Keegan. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here, and welcome to all of our um, attendees that are, are viewing this workshop via the web. Uh, delighted to have you here. I can tell that there's been uh, a lot of interest in genome editing and how it relates to environmental health, and so this is an opportunity for um, uh, to do what our committee does best. Uh, that is, um, I want to tell you about our committee. Whoops, got another control here. What we do, um, our committee is Emerging Science for Environmental Health Decisions, and um, the committee has been in, in activity in some uh, shape or form with the National Academies for the past 15 years, with always an eye on the horizon always looking at what is happening by way of new technologies, new findings, new paradigms, new frameworks for understanding environmental health decision making. And so uh, we look at and facilitate communication among government, industry, and environmental groups. Um, we examine scientific advances that may be used for the identification, quantification, and control of environmental impacts. And we want to very much acknowledge our uh, primary sponsor, that's the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, who has always been very foresighted as to the critical importance that this convening of thought experts um, achieves in making sure that we are on the horizon rather than uh, too mired and too focused in the weeds. Uh, we're always trying to take a perspective of what is coming, um, what is emerging, and what can be provocative and stimulating in influencing um, how we do environmental health research and also environmental health policy um, decision making and analysis. I wanted to recognize the many uh, individuals that contribute to the active work of the committee. That includes um, our co-chair, Kim Buckelhide, who is here from Brown University, um, Lisa Aylward, who um, has been majorly involved in the or organization and coordination of this workshop, um, Wei Shei Chu from Texas A&M University, Kevin Elliott from Michigan State University, Christy Pullen Fednick uh, from Natural, Nat Natural Resource Defense Council, Gary Ginsburg, Connecticut Department of Public Health, Norb Kaminsky, Michigan State University, Margaret Karagas, Dartmouth University, Patrick McMullen, Cytovation, Gary Miller, Emory University, Reza Razapour, also a member of the organizing committee from Dow AgroSciences, Gina Solomon, California Environmental Protection Agency, and our ex officio member, former chair of this committee, uh, Bill McFarland from Colorado State University. So our work, uh, again, this committee has been hard at work in um, various forms over the past 15 years. And what, when I came to join and be involved, what struck me as remarkable is how um, in various times the committee decided on convening workshops on topics that were little known within the realm of environmental health um, among researchers, among policymakers, and not uh, long after convening the workshop, um, much activity, it led to much activity and stimulation and one example from my own perspective in the years that I've been in DC was the Exposome workshop, which was just a few years ago. And I remember attending, very much like I'm attending this genome editing workshop today, saying, I've heard about it, 
I don't exactly know what the concept is. It sounds enormous and amorphous. What is this about? And then within a very short um, matter of time after that workshop, you started to see exposome advances, ex exposome funding, and a lot of innovative ideas. And so I think that's our hallmark um, uh, uh, within the committee. And here are some examples of um, some of the topics that the committee has covered over the years, the workshops have covered, including exploring hu uh, human genomic plasticity, plasticity, plasticity and environmental stressors, um, new insights into microbiome study for environmental health, uh, the exposome, a powerful approach for evaluating environmental exposures, inter-individual variability, new ways to study and implications for decision making, and biological factors that underlie individual susceptibility and environmental um, stressors. Um, since I've been involved in the committee and also Kim Buckelhide, some of the more recent um, workshops that we've led have included um, individual exposure monitoring, new technologies in individual exposure monitoring. We recently done, did a very provocative uh, causal inference uh, workshop, and the proceedings of that workshop are available. And then um, very recently, uh, we had a workshop just uh, about a month and a half or so ago looking at um, new technologies and changing paradigms in toxicity testing. So all of this information is publicly available, and I really commend it to your attention. Um, the webcasts uh, remain online and easily available, too. So you can follow this work both historically and also going forward. And again, for those of you that are watching online, uh, please do check out um, our website and all of the uh, compendium of information that we've stored from the activities of the committee. So um, speaking of um, different workshops, here's another, please save the date, February 20th through the 21st, Informing Environmental Health Decisions Through Data Integration. And I know that organizing committee is already hard at work, and um, what we're seeking to do is take a um, look and a uh, um, assessment of the kinds of data systems that are available to us and the various data that can potentially be converged, compared, integrated to uh, allow us better decisions about the effects of chemicals and the impacts on human health. I also am delighted to acknowledge the hard work of the organizing committee for this workshop. And as I mentioned, Lisa Elward. Um, David Gerhold from the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences at, at NIH, Shruti Mahalingaya from Boston University School of Medicine, Gary Miller from Emory University, Reza Razapur, Dow AgroSciences, Trey Thomas, um, one of our federal liaisons to the committee. Um, we have a number of federal representatives that contribute to the planning for our committee, and Trey has been uh, centrally involved in the organization for this genome editing workshop. Uh, Christopher Volpe, University of Florida, and Lu Ping Zhang, University of California, Berkeley. Thanks to all of you for your hard work in bringing this uh, very interesting workshop together. And now it's my job to cover a few um, housekeeping reminders. Uh, please silence your phones. Uh, use the microphones at all time. That's uh, really in important for us to be able to um, amplify comments and um, contributions so that everyone on the web can hear it. And also, as you may know, this um, workshop is uh, being written up. The proceedings are being written up, so we need an um, audio uh, record of what's being said. This is public and webcast uh, to discuss and exchange data. We really encourage you to participate, and there'll be ample time for the audience members to do that. And for those of you that are in the room, we have the two microphones um, here that you can uh, come on up, and we want you to recognize or um, identify yourself and your institution, um, your affiliation, before you speak. Um, be mindful that comments and ideas made during the workshop should be attributed to individual speakers and not the organizations, other, uh, unless otherwise stated. And similarly, the comments made, the um, ideas discussed, need not be attributed directly to the National Academies of Sciences. Um, they're very much a reflection of the individuals that are contributing to uh, the workshop itself. We are encouraging social media presence, and um, please use the hashtag ESEHD workshop 
I have some guidelines on the table in the back registration about social media. Um, simply put, we want to encourage you to uh, distribute the ideas and information that are being communicated unless a speaker says, I've got some new data, this is unpublished, I appreciate you not circulating it yet. Um, then we can say, please refrain from doing that via social media. And then obviously upholding the utmost discretion and decorum and communication and exchange and debate. Um, and then keep an eye out for a summary of this workshop that would be forthcoming in the first quarter of this year. So those are um, my uh, housekeeping details. And without further ado, we have a very important message from our uh, um, highly appreciated sponsor, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. And I'm delighted to introduce Kimberly Thigpen Tart. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you all for letting me take just a few moments to welcome you here on behalf of my institute, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, and my director, Dr. Linda Birnbaum. Unfortunately, Linda couldn't be here with us today, but uh, we will have a great opportunity to hear from our deputy director, Dr. Rick Wojcik, who's going to share some thoughts on why NIEHS is so excited about this technology and the potential that it has for environmental health sciences. So today's topic is exactly the kind of science that this committee was formed to explore. Um, and it's an example of why NIEHS has been so proud to be its sponsor over the years. As new science and technologies emerge, we are faced with uh, even more complex questions um, ranging from the scientific to the policy to the political to public health um, across the field. But we're also uh, challenged with new opportunities and possibilities to improve the lives of people around the world by improving their health. And in fact, this is the mission uh, and the responsibility of NIEHS. So on behalf of my institute, again, let me thank all of you engaged here today, whether in the room or with us online. Um, thank you for bringing your attention, uh, your very much needed um, and welcomed expertise, and even perhaps some of your outlandish ideas uh, to the discussions we're going to have as we explore this technology and the issues that surround its use. For as we know, this is how we propel science, and in turn, science propels us forward. I feel certain the next day and a half will bring a truly enlightening workshop, and I myself look forward to learning a lot. Good morning. On the behalf of the organizing committee and our standing committee, I'd like to welcome everyone to this workshop. I'm going to provide a very quick overview so that we can get right into our, our uh, very interesting speakers. Um, and well, that's not the right thing. <laughs> um, before we get started, I just want to note that the National Academies has been engaged in a number of recent activities and reports relevant to the area of genome editing, um, including uh, the ones illustrated here. There are handouts out in the registration desk about these. In particular, um, I think you may find these very, very interesting, and some of them are quite recent. So I do want to note that this is one of many things that the National Academies have been doing in this arena. Our workshop is really broadly divided into three sessions. The initial session is, is an introduction to genome and epigenome, epigenome editing tools. Uh, trends, techniques, capabilities, so some, some background and overview of the, of the underlying technologies. Um, session two is really a series of, I think, are going to be fascinating case studies where people have been employing these technologies in uh, areas relevant to toxicology and environmental health. Um, and these give us an early idea of how these technologies may enable us to, um, to move our science forward in the environmental health arena. Day two um, moves really into discussions of how we can further incorporate and spread these technologies and use these technologies in the environmental health arena and apply them and understand them for the ability to help us make decisions or um, advance our understanding of environmental health issues. So roughly, day one is where we are now, and day two is asking questions about where we are going and how we can use these technologies more um, and expand the use of these technologies. 
One thing that you'll notice is not present on these in this workshop, which you might have expected to see, are extended discussions about ethical considerations related to these tools. We recognize this is an ongoing area of a, a lot of dialogue, a lot of consideration, a lot of issues. Um, and certainly, um, the, the NAS uh, committees have, sim have recently released a report specifically about these issues. Because of this, we've, we have elected not to devote specific time to these issues. They may come up in the course of discussions. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge them, but move along um, and, and realize that they're outside the, the main scope of this workshop uh, for, the, for the purposes of spending our very limited time. So I just want to make that, make that note and understand that if we if our moderators elect to acknowledge and move on from a discussion that becomes very um, very focused on those types of issues, understand it's not because we don't think they're important, but rather that we, we have limited time for the, for the technological side, which is what we're really focused on today and tomorrow. So the goals of this workshop then are broadly to broaden familiarity with these tools in the environmental health and science arena. And more importantly, perhaps, to spark and explore ideas for expanding and, and broadening the use of these tools and thinking about the new capabilities and, and taking us in directions that perhaps we did not uh, envision before. And to that end, we are really asking for the active participation of our, of our audience, both here in the room and on the web. We have a number of panel discussions where we hope to have time for questions and discussion and exploration, um, both today and then tomorrow in particular. We have two extended panel discussion periods. We really encourage you to ask questions, to probe limitations or capabilities, to offer ideas and perspectives, to, um, to really even this blue sky thinking that, that Kimberly mentioned, the sort of maybe even outlandish ideas. Can we do this? Could we possibly? Uh, we'd like to have those broad discussions in this workshop because we think that's where the sparks of ideas that move, for, move us forward in the science will come from. And with that, I welcome you to the workshop and I will introduce Dr. Mahalangaya from Boston University um, who will be moderating our first session. Thank you very much.